This is Geometry Lesson 7 for Overlapping Triangles. We are going to continue with our study of how to prove triangles congruent to each other. But sometimes our triangles are going to be overlapping. And so we need to come up with some strategies that we can use in order to pull the triangles apart so that we can tell what um, we're trying to show to be congruent to each other. So whenever you see overlapping triangles, one of the easiest strategies that you can use is to pull the two triangles and draw them separately. When you draw them separately, it's easier to see what things are congruent to each other and what things you want to try and prove to be congruent to each other in the theorem or in the proof. So let's take a look at number one. I have some overlapping triangles and I can pull them apart to help me see them better. So you can see I pulled these first two triangles out. I can see I had this triangle here, and that I'll call OLT. And then I had another triangle here that was OSP. And you can see I have some double shading here, but the one thing that stands out as a f between the two triangles as an overlapping piece is this angle O here. And so when we have a, a something that's in both triangles, we can use the reflexive property to state that those parts would be congruent to each other. Let's take a look at this next triangle. I have triangle starts at T down here at S, and I have one of them that goes up to O and back to T. And then I have another one that has that same ST, but it kind of goes off this way to M and back to S. So I can see that I've got a common side in this one. You can see this triangle here and this triangle here. We have that overlapping and this side here would be the common side. So in this proof, if we were going to if we were going to do a proof with that, we could say that TS was congruent to TS once again using the reflexive property. As you can see, in this next proof, we have another set of overlapping triangles. Kind of hard to tell which angles are going corresponding to what angles, so I think if I pull these triangles apart, it might be easier to see. So I'm going to do that right now. So both angle N is in, part, is in both of them, and this goes down to J to L, and this was M to K. So now let's mark what we're given. We have angle N, M, K, angle N, M, K being congruent to angle N, L, J. So that's this. Then we had side M, K being congruent to side L, J. And we're trying to prove a set of sides are congruent. And I know I can do that if I get my triangles congruent. So I need to see, since my triangles are overlapping, there was this piece here that was in part of both of them, that angle N. So I can say angle N is congruent to angle N using the reflexive property. So now if you look, I have an angle, a side, and an angle here. And if you look at your markings, that looks like angle, angle, side, steps one and two. And then we can go ahead and use the CPCF theorem to prove that our triangles are congruent. All right, let's take a look at this last proof here. We're given that some sides are parallel to each other, some um, sides that are congruent to each other, and some angles. So the markings are on here. Um, I think I'm going to wait to pull these triangles apart. These parallel lines are telling me that I might want to keep them together because I can get some angles congruent to each other using um, corresponding angles, I think. Uh, so I might leave them together here. So, But you can see I've got triangle FAC right here and EBD. Let's see um, how this goes. We may want to pull them apart later. Um, let's just start working on this proof. We want to get two sides congruent to each other. So I know that I can, if I get the triangles congruent, I can get their parts congruent. So let's start with the parallel sides. If AF is parallel to BE, stated in the given, then I have a set of corresponding angles here. Um, so I can say angle FAB, or FAC, either name is fine, is congruent to angle EBD. 
and that's because of the corresponding angles postulate. Okay, and then I know that AF is congruent to BF, that's given. Angle F is congruent to angle E, that is also given. So if you look at this, it appears that I have some angles, and two sets of angles and a side, and that side happens to be included in the two angles, so I can use angle, side, angle. Let's make sure those angles are all in my proof. I have a set of angles, a set of sides, and a set of angles. So yes, I can use ASA, and then I can say my parts are congruent using CPCF. This concludes our uh, discussion of proofs in this lesson 7-4. When you get to class, we'll do several more proofs, pulling part triangles and proving their triangles congruent and then their parts congruent.